Call the vote on the City Council meeting to order for Tuesday, July 21st. May we have roll call. Councilmember Olkerberg? Here. Schultz? Here. Burbank? Here. Rainey? Here. Spenby? Dotson? Abraham? Here. Mayor Coons? Here. We have five of the council and the mayor present. Thank you. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to welcome everyone here to the council meeting tonight and we do have some additions to the agenda. Uh, 1.3.2 proclamation for Night to Unite. 2.5.1 lease renewal for SimCAC in room 11 at the Merritt Building. 3.11 taxi cab permit. And 3.51 resolution 5815 consent to interstate power and light company assignment. Uh, look for approval of the additions and uh, update of the agenda. Moved to approve. Motion by Greg Schultz to approve it. Do you have a second? Second. Second by uh, Jeff Okerberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved as with the updates. Moving on to 1.3.1 proclamation closed line project and this will go to Tom. Thank you Les. Uh, I've been asked to do a proclamation for the closed line project and the proclamation reads as follows. Proclamation City of Otana. Whereas domestic violence and abuse impacts everyone in the community either directly or indirectly. And whereas there are no good gender or social economic barriers when it comes to domestic violence and abuse. And whereas one in three women in the United States have experienced a form of intimate partner violence. And whereas one in four men in the United States has experienced a form of intimate partner violence. And whereas silence often provides a cover for those perpetual domestic violence and abuse. Whereas domestic violence damages children emotionally, physically, socially, and spiritually. Whereas silence office provides a cover for those who penetrate uh, pr 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 domestic violence and abuse. And whereas by breaking the silence of domestic violence and abuse allows healing to begin. Now therefore I, Thomas A. Kuntz, Mayor of the City of Otana, hereby proclaim Sunday, July 26, 2015 to be Domestic Violence and Abuse Awareness Day in the City of Otana and call upon all citizens to support this closed line project and similar efforts to raise awareness on this issue. I also urge individuals and families to speak out safely on this issue with the goal of being bringing healing to the victims of domestic violence and abuse. Dated July 21st, 2015, Thomas A. Kuntz. And Pastor Kirk would like to make some comments on this? Yes. And thank you, Mayor Kuntz, for speaking out on this emotional, difficult issue of domestic violence. First of all, I'd just like to reiterate what he was said in the proclamation. This issue affects everyone, either directly or indirectly. There are no gender or socioeconomic barriers when it comes to domestic violence and abuse. And those statistics are, are real. One in three women in the United States has experienced a form of intimate partner violence. One in four men in the United States has experienced a form of intimate partner violence. Domestic violence damages children emotionally, physically, socially, spiritually. And silence is a cover for those who perpetuate domestic violence. So to break the silence allows the healing to begin. And that's the whole purpose of the Closed Line Project, which is coming to Oatana this Sunday, July 26th, through the joint efforts of the Crisis Resource Center of Oatana and the Minnesota Coalition for Battered Women. This event provides a safe yet powerful way to break the silence on domestic violence. As the name implies, specially decorated shirts will be hung on a clothesline 
in Central Park this Sunday, July 26, from 3 to 7 p.m. There will be an opening ceremony held at 4 p.m. And the clothesline will start out with 80 shirts provided by the Minnesota Coalition for Battered Women. Each of those shirts represents a person who has been killed through domestic violence in Minnesota during the past three years. Then people will also have the opportunity to decorate additional shirts to add to the clothesline to commemorate those who have lost their lives through domestic violence. And we'll also have a table for information about this issue. And I'd just like to add two other things. If you know anyone who's been impacted by domestic violence, you know the scars from abuse remain years, even decades, after the abuse ends. So any opportunity for a victim to tell their story does lead to healing. It's also important to remember that women are not safe once they end their relationships with their abusers. Victims of abuse need protection for up to a year or more after they end their relationship with their abusers. And so I do encourage all of you to participate in the Domestic Awareness Domestic Abuse Awareness Day and also to attend the Clothesline Project this Sunday in Central Park. I have more information about this topic if you, anyone is interested and thank you again. Here's the proclamation you take with you. Thank you. Now we do have another proclamation for you on the night to unite. We do, man. That one reads, Proclamation, City of Oatana. Whereas the Minnesota Crime Prevention Association, along with AAA and local law enforcement agencies, are sponsoring a statewide program called Night to Unite on August 4th, 2015. And whereas Night to Unite is designed to get to know one another in your neighborhood, build neighborhood involvement by bringing police and communities together, and to bring an awareness to crime prevention and local law enforcement efforts. And whereas, Night to Unite supports the idea that crime prevention is an inexpensive, effective tool in strengthening police and community partnerships. And whereas, Night to Unite provides opportunities to celebrate the ongoing work of law enforcement and neighborhoods in Owatonna by working together to fight crime and vandalism and increase public safety for all citizens. And whereas, the citizens of Owatonna play an important role in assisting the Owatonna Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violent prevention efforts. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Tom Kuntz, do hereby call upon all citizens in Owatonna to participate in Night to Unite on August 4, 2015. Further, let it be resolved that I, Mayor Thomas Kuntz, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 4, 2015 to be Night to Unite in Owatonna. Proclamation dated this 21st day of July, 2015. Thank you. Now, next step is 1.3.3, appointment of commissioner and oath of office. And with that... And I am recommending to the city council that uh, the Shade Tree Commission we appoint John Simon, EDA Corey Menzine, Human Rights Commission Brianna Leesno. Lysno and Fire Civil Service Mike Beckman. Okay, and uh, with that, we do need a, a motion to approve these re recommendations. And uh, Chair is looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A motion by Dave Burbank to approve these appointments, and a second by uh, Kevin Rainey. Any further discussion from the council? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. You may. And raise your right hand and repeat after me, and when we get to uh, I, just say your name, and when we get to the office, say the office that you're being appointed to. So, aye. Say, please. Do solemnly swear that I'll support the Constitution of the United States? The Constitution of the State of Minnesota? The Constitution of the State of Minnesota? 
the state of Minnesota. The laws of the city of Otana. The laws of the city of Otana. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of. Of the city of Owatonna, of the city of Owatonna to, which I have been appointed, to which I have been appointed, to the best of my knowledge and ability, so help me God. To the best of my knowledge and ability, so help me God. Thank you very, very much for serving. Truly really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tom, and we look forward to working with each and every one of you on the different boards and commissions. Thank you for serving. Corey and Brianne, if you just want to drop those off at the table there, um, or to me, that'd be great. Thanks. Moving on to the next item, 1.4 is a finance report. I will ask Council Member Schultz to write it, read it. Total expenditures presented for approval tonight are as follows. Checks over 20,000 are $30,689 to Molten, Molten and Mink for the airport master plan, $29,280 to Businessware Solutions for IT backup software and hardware, $35,030 to Crane Creek Asphalt for Hot Mix, $20,549 to James Brother Construction for the East Apron Reconstruction, $43,658 to the Steele County Auditor for the second quarter LEC costs, $111,873 to the Southeast Service Cooperative for the July health insurance premium, other expenditures of $354,291, makes total expenditures presented for approval tonight of $625,372.01. Thank you, Greg. You've all heard the report as presented. What is your wishes? Motion to pay the bills. A motion by Kevin Rainey to pay the bills. Do we have a second to that? Second. Second by Jeff Oakenberg. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? This has been approved. Moving on to the consent agenda items, we have the one edition of the lease renewal. Uh, these are uh, minutes of meetings, uh, requests for license permits, etc. all grouped into one motion. And what is the council's wishes? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Greg Schultz to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dave Burbank. Any further discussion on any items? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? These have been approved. Aye. Moving down to the action items 3.1.1 uh, taxi cab permit application Abdukur Warsami doing business as USA Transportation. And with that, we will go to. Chris. Thank you, Les. We have received the application um, and also a copy of his background search completed by the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. We have a vehicle inspection report and certificate of insurance. Uh, the annual fee has been prorated and staff would recommend approval. Thank you, Chris. Any questions from the council? Warsami, does that mean you're not going to be at the high school this year or is this an addition to it? Uh, this is for uh, addition of Good. Borsami is very involved with the high school and uh, the Somali students, so glad you're staying with that. Thank you. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Kevin Rainey to approve this request. Do we have a sec second to that? Second. Second by Greg Schultz. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Congratulations and good luck with it. Moving on down to 3.2.1 agreement to build utility easement for Viracon, and this will go to Troy. Uh, good evening. I feel like I'm on an island over here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can move closer. <laughs> uh, Viracon is proposing a 53,000 square foot addition on the west side of their 300 building. The building addition is to fill in a courtyard area in between two existing extensions of the building. There is a 50 foot utility easement uh, that currently runs under the building and this addition would is proposed to go over that uh, as well. The easement contains a 21 inch sanitary sewer main. This main was televised recently and is deemed to be in good condition. The easement also carries stormwater through an open channel from the north. And due to the, the concerns we had with the drainage of the stormwater, we did have uh, 
Viracon complete a hydraulic drainage study to show that the proposed additions and modifications to the drainage way would not raise the flood levels downstream. The study has been provided and the rates are even uh, if not lower downstream due to the ponds that we've constructed with recent projects as well as the revisions to the drainage way with this construction. Uh, attached is a agreement uh, that the city attorney and staff have approved and Viracon would need to record the agreement prior to build a billing permit being issued. There would be no budgetary impacts to the city uh, with this request and Viracon would be responsible for all construction and maintenance and replacement of the sanitary line in the future when it is required. So staff is recommending city council approval of the agreement with Viracon, allowing them to construct within a utility easement. Thank you, Troy. Any questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Greg Schultz to approve. Do we have a second to that? Second. Second by Dave Burbank. Any further discussion there? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved to proceed. Thank you, Troy. Moving on to the next item is 3.3.1. Conditional use request for Elevation North Church. Troy. So Elevation North Church uh, received a conditional use permit in August of last year uh, to locate their church at 2002 Austin Road. Um, with that approval, there were six conditions placed on that. Um, the request uh, by Elevation North Church um, is in reference to condition number two which is a $5,000 escrow shall be submitted to the city at the time of certificate of occupancy to ensure that the exterior parking is completed as code requires, as well as condition number four, uh, the applicant shall provide 47 hard surface parking stalls by August 30th, 2015. And this shall also include access aisles to the stalls. On all commercial projects, the city requires an escrow to be submitted prior to the issuance of a, of a certificate of occupancy. The city performed a final inspection on the property uh, on December 12th of last year and the inspection failed. At some point prior to the reinspection in April, um, the applicant had occupied the property and began holding church services and associated events. As of this day, a certificate of occupancy has not been issued. The building official has stated that a temporary certificate of occupancy can be issued upon uh, compliance with the ESCO requirement. So we have um, uh, Pastor Doug Jones um, did appear at the planning commission meeting and had stated that there were some uh, financial issues in providing uh, the escrow and wanted an extension of both uh, those conditions to, um, I believe, 2017, August of 2017. So basically a two-year extension on those two conditions. So the Planning Commission uh, had much discussion on it. They did recommend approval with um, some conditions, uh, with the following conditions, a financial guarantee in the amount of 5000 shall be submitted to the city prior to a temporary certificate of occupancy being issued. Uh, this should be in a format acceptable uh, by the city and able to be drawn upon solely by the city um, and shall be submitted by October 15th of this year. All parking uh, and required drive aisles shall be paved by August 30th of 2017. So that's giving them a two year extension there. Uh, all billing code issues shall be completed by the end of the year, December 31st. And this will allow a full certificate of occupancy to be issued at that time. All conditions except those amended above shall remain and, and required to be met as previously presented. And all conditions and timelines shall be met. If there is failure to meet the conditions, there would either have to be another amendment to it or there is a legal process to go through on a conditional use permit if the conditions are not met. That could be an option too um, if there's not some resolution or another extension. So the $5,000 escrow uh, extended that out to uh, October 15th and then giving them two years to uh, pave the parking. That was a recommendation of the Planning Commission and so staff would recommend 
uh, that recommendation by the Planning Commission. Thank you, Troy. Questions from the Council? So what, you, what you're saying is the 5,000 needs to be uh, immediate? October 15th, um, which I believe aligns with a, a date in which the church has to provide um, some financing to the bank uh, for, for to extend the loan to be able to do some of this work. So they aligned it with that date and then they did uh, allow the two year extension on actually paving the parking lot. But the temporary permit for a certificate of occupancy starts now. Well, that the certificate of occupancy, all conditions of that would need to be met by December 31st. Okay, but the once the escrow is submitted, we can issue a certificate of a temporary certificate of occupancy. Okay, but if they've got until October 15th, they can't occupy it until that point. There's not uh, life safety issues on the certificate of occupancy. It's more of a um, providing the guarantees that all uh, all of the requirements including the parking will be provided by a certain date so our billing official was comfortable with allowing this them time to the end of the year to complete everything for the certificate of occupancy to get the permanent one but not the temporary one well the temporary one uh, could be issued immediately yes okay. upon getting the escrow okay yeah, I guess that was my question. Um, as I'm looking at this, it says a financial guarantee in the amount of 5000 shall be submitted to the city prior to a temporary certificate. So the way I'm reading this, um, uh, it's it's shut down until the city receives the $5,000, and, and upon receiving that, we give them a temporary. Yes, and we're giving them, them to October 15th to get that in. So, so under the yeah so under so so we're kind of talking both sides of the fence here then are we not well uh, we could not allow them to do anything until the escrow and as soon as they get the escrow in we issue a, t a temporary <coughs> certificate of occupancy in which case they could hold church service again and then we're giving them to October 15th to get that completed and that's my understanding of the recommendation from the Planning Commission is that until that money is there, they really can't and will get that certificate of occupancy. Yep, so we can make that clarification here right now that they do not occupy until that escrow is submitted. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Troy, is there any past practice as far as church is concerned to, in this type of matter? This is the first time it's happened in the city of Oatana? Uh I can't answer that specifically. Um, you know, we have at times um, granted exceptions and extensions for um, existing buildings. Many times existing buildings don't meet code requirements, including paved parking lots. And so uh, allowing a new business or a new church uh, someone that's willing to invest in the property and fix it up um, is a more long term as more long term benefit to the city than than sort of shutting the door on them and and letting the building um, not be occupied at all. And so we have uh, in in many cases granted exceptions and invariances to allow time for hard surfacing. Many times, uh, planning commission has given a year. And I'm trying to think if we've done it two years in the past, we quite possibly could have two years to do hard surfacing because that is a large expense. It's a, you know, tough for a new business or a new entity to come in and put in all that money, have all that money up front. So that is not uncommon. I can't say specifically if it pertained to a church previously. Okay. Any other questions from the council? I've just got a comment, um, Troy. Uh, as as I went through the packet, um, the information in, in regards to this request was laid out very well. Um, a lot of a lot of the questions were answered because of good note taking in the in the meeting. So thank uh, thank your people for doing that. Thank you. Um, I guess the concern that I've got is still. 
allowing them to use it without a certificate of occupancy, whether it's permanent or temporary. So that that's a concern that I've got, is that we are setting a precedent that I can remember of all the years that I've been on the council, that we usually do not allow a temporary until. And you certainly can say there's no, no further occupancy of the building until the escrow is submitted. Um, you know, there are other things within the building that need to be completed, none of which stuff that typically we would allow a temporary certificate of occupancy for. It's the escrow and ensuring that, knowing that everything is going to be done because we have money in an escrow is typically what we require before we issue a certificate of occupancy. So there's not any code issues in having people occupy it. It's more of a process uh, in which we're following to ensure that everything is completed by the end. From my standpoint, I don't have any problem with uh, the parking at That's the time we've extended that, but it is the concern of the other one. Greg? Just, just to be clear, they are meeting there now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the congregation is, I think they said 35 people, and they're hoping for at least 50. Um, I'm not prepared to play hardball and say you can't be in there if you don't come up with the escrow by October 15th. So so what, what you're saying is that if they don't come up with it by October 15th, then you're going to play hardball? Not necessarily. <laughs> we'll look at it again. <laughs> well, we you know we have to give a deadline and we have to have some mm -hmm. kind of a firm commitment from our, the council here as to what we're going to do. So I guess it's uh, mm. at this point, uh, any other comments or questions from the council? You know, I, I guess I'm still looking at this, and 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 I'm reading that without the five thousand, there's no certificate of occupancy. But yet we're saying even if you don't have the five thousand dollars, you can occupy the building. And so, uh, I think that needs to be needs to be reworded um, prior to making a a motion. So, how? Oh, uh, how would we like to proceed? Uh, what you're saying is not to play hardball. We would allow them up till November, October 15th to get the 5,000. Yeah, it sounds like they're going to have a hard time doing that. Okay. What do we do after the 15th? Talk about it again. Give them an extension if it's necessary. Okay. Yes, Doug. I'm the pastor of uh, Elevation North. My name is Doug Jones. Um, but we did not know that we could not occupy the building when we went into it. We thought we were given a temporary at that point. That was our understanding. We have done everything that possibly can be done that you guys as the city of Owatonna have required. I've been through five building projects, one of which was a million, and we never had the trouble that we've had complying to rules that you guys have here. In fact, we figured that the construction cost was going to be somewhere between 39 and 45,000 and by the time we got done with everything we're in excess of 80,000 in remodel. Uh, when we went to the bank to get the, the loan they would only allow so much which we have 6,800 that we have to come up with by the end of October that wasn't covered by the, uh, the loan. We have done everything we possibly can. We have enough parking space for 100 people. The back of the building the only thing that's required is that by a statue is that you have to have 20 feet of hard surface to get away from the building for wheelchairs. We have 24 feet of hard surface of a sidewalk that you can get away from the building. We don't need 47 parking spots because the state fire marshal will only allow us to have 125 people in the sanctuary instead of 188 that the zoning board told us that we could have. They said no you can't by the way the chairs are and the aisles have to be for wheelchair. Uh, the problem is, is the $5,000. It's not the process that we won't do it. It's just that we have put out and put out and put out and this small congregation of 35 to 50 people raised a big share of the money as we went as far as paying the rent and all of those things. We're not here to break the law or to whatever. It's just 
a burden that's being put on and my problem is is that we need to add eight more parking spots by the time we get to 125 in, in attendance five thousand dollars to 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 make us hold the line I don't understand why I don't see that as a legal thing it's a way of the way you guys have done business we're not here to try to break the law but we can get up to uh, 98 people with present parking we have enough room for that many uh, we wanted to add the extension now if 2,000 is a, or 5,000 is a matter that we have to have uh, now in order to stay in the building then you'll have to go lock the door tonight because we don't have the access to five thousand dollars I was hoping that at the zoning they would give us to the end of the year with a temporary uh, occupancy that we could stay there and uh, then we could start playing hardball by the end of December to give us a chance to raise the funds. If that isn't what you want to allow us, then that's a decision that you have to make. I had a guy contact me today and say, we would like to buy your building. We can sell it and move out of Watana if that's what you want. I mean, $5,000, we don't have it. And I just, uh, we're not trying to break the law or make it difficult, but in a small church, that is very difficult. Thank you. Questions from the council, comments? I, uh, I think because they're already meeting there and, and they're attempting to comply, I don't see any reason why we can't give them the temporary occupancy permit right now. Okay. Well, it's uh, what the I do. The only thing that we don't have done yet, as far as the code is concerned, is when they put the panel in uh, for the women's bathroom, somehow he measured wrong and we have to extend that 10 inches. That's the only thing that's holding up. Everything else we have done all okay. the way through. That's the only hold up as far as building things needing to be done. And I think you. I'm, I'm not concerned with the parking issue either. I, uh, I don't see that as a, a stumbling block. Um, do you see $5,000 as a challenge by December 31st? Very well, could be, but at least that's better than the 15th of October. Okay, but what I'm looking for is a motion to proceed with this. Uh, I think uh, we've got all the questions we need to ask answered we have to make a decision as to how we proceed from this point I have a question for Troy Troy are you comfortable with with moving that 5,000 back to December 31st yeah the extension um, you know that's why we're we're having the public meeting and and the, the request is here is they're asking to have it extended further out so if you want to allow more time that's certainly Possible. Are you okay with giving a temporary certificate of occupancy now? Uh, I am not. Um, I would. I would rather uh, make sure that our building official is okay with that. Okay. Well, we need to proceed uh, tonight or table this until the next meeting to get that answer. I'll, I'll make a motion. With the uh, sec, with the six or five recommendations, that uh, number one, we we issue that temporary certificate with the building official's permission without the five thousand dollar escrow, and that uh, that the time for that escrow will be moved out to December thirty first. Okay, we have a motion by Greg Schultz to. Move with uh, 5,000 escrow to December 31st and issue a temporary use permit, conditional use permit. In addition to the at other this point, at this point, at other okay. recommendations. That motion by Greg Schultz. Do you have a second of that? Yeah. Second. Right. Mark. You said subject to the building official's approval, didn't you? Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by Greg Schultz. Do you have a second to that? Second. Second by Kevin Rainey. Further discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? This has been approved until December 31st with a. With, with, with uh, allowing a temporary use permit 
at this point. Yeah. So good luck with it and uh, look forward to seeing it happen. Okay. Thank you. And now we will move on to 3.3.2 um, conditional use request C1377 R. Garcia request for food vendor vehicle and back to Troy. So the request here is a conditional use permit to allow a street vendor vehicle to be permanently located on private property within a B3 central business district. Uh, the ordinance permits street vending vehicles uh, on private property in the B3 district as a conditional use. Uh, the trailer would serve food and has been approved by the Minnesota Department of Health as well as the fire department. The applicant currently runs the grocery store and lives in the rental space above the building uh, at 204 North Oak Avenue. Uh, the proposed trailer would be eight feet by 20 feet deep. Uh, it currently is, it's currently located on the south side of the building on the easternmost parking stall. Uh, the site plan shows the potential to rotate the, tra the trailer from its current location. The applicant uh, is all right with either uh, the current setup or what's proposed in the site plan. Parking is the largest concern uh, with this proposal. The commercial space of the building is approximately 4,100 square feet. The upper level is one residential unit and code requires um, 10 parking spaces for this property. Uh, with, with the trailer occupying at least one of those um, and then requiring um, parking spaces for themselves, the property only has six or seven spaces and it currently is non-compliant as far as parking but that is not unusual downtown and most buildings do not meet our parking requirements. We technically we require one parking space per 500 uh, square feet of, of private parking. Uh, anything that's there now is grandfathered in so only new businesses or new buildings uh, does that apply. So in this case, we're adding a new business. It's taking up at least one, if not two, parking spaces in order to be located there. And then that'll draw additional um, parking needs as well. So the conditional use permit is specific on you know the conditions in which to review. Parking of one is, uh, of course, one. Uh, we did have a. a public hearing at the Planning Commission. Uh, we did have the property owner to the north of the property express great concern for uh, the parking demands that the current business as well as the proposed trailer would have in the area. Uh, it's been experiencing some um, problems uh, with people and customers parking in his parking lot and so he did uh, object to uh, the proposal here. Uh, the Planning Commission, again, had much discussion on it, uh, and they did make uh, a recommendation of approval with a number of conditions. Uh, there is, uh, on that lot, a back portion of the lot. It kind of drops off, um, but it kind of levels off at the bottom there. Uh, possibly enough room for additional parking spaces. One of the conditions they had was a minimum of five new off-street parking spaces shall be provided on the western edge of the property. These stalls shall be constructed to city standards, including curbing and pavement prior to the opening of the trailer. Parking area on the property to the north shall not be used with this property without a formal easement uh, from the property owner. The applicant shall receive sign permits for the sign on the trailer. All Department of Health rules shall apply at all times, and the applicant shall not operate for more than 21 consecutive days, um, which means there needs to be a break in operations for at least one day, and this is according to the Minnesota Department of Health standards. So staff would recommend approval uh, of the re recommendation of the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any questions from the council? Um, I've got a couple of concerns. Um, the way the trailer is situated at this point, um, I'd rather see it uh, not north-south, but east-west, taking up two parking stalls instead of one. Um, I do believe that it's a, a traffic hazard at that intersection if you're driving on Oak and making a right-hand turn to go westbound on Vine. Um, I do believe there's a visibility 
uh, problem there. And if there are people that are at that counter, I think there would be even a further problem. As far as the parking is concerned, um, for us to go further with this, I think we need to see some uh, work done on, the, on that parking lot and some attempt by the owner to, to create that parking lot. Thank you. Any questions, other comments from the council? I think the list that you've got here that by the recommendations of the co Planning Commission are good ones. I think we should uh, be using those as our guide to follow from my standpoint. Um, question, any comments or con from the council? So I question I've okay. got is based on the staff recommendation, uh, kind of going back to the prior one, are they authorized to be in business in this trailer prior to these five things being done? That is the way that the approval was given, yes. They are authorized to be open for business at this point? No, the conditions need to be met before they can okay. be open. Okay, okay thank you. What is the council's wishes? The, uh, the, the owner is here if he wants to speak. Do you have, would you come up to the microphone, please? Uh, yes, uh, we'd like to point out that we did make an agreement with uh, the landlord, Alton Johnson, and he agreed to uh, do the parking stalls in the back. Okay, and how soon is that going to be done? Um, he said as soon as we'd like them to be done that he'd be glad to help um, put those in. Okay, so you get those done, then you can open. Is that basically what the I'm, conditions yeah, are at this point? So. so, okay. Yeah, that's what the, they approved on to have the uh, parking stalls in before opening. Okay. In order to have okay. Okay. Well, with that, uh, we'll. You know, my recommendation would be to approve it as recommended by the. The planning commission so had just a question had you ever considered having the trailer down in that riverside lot and having traffic come down there um, to utilize well we could do that too um, uh, down coming off of Lake Street and then um, I I tend to agree with council member uh, Okerberg as far as the that that intersection if you get traffic slowing to look for a parking space in there and then pedestrian traffic it's pretty close to the curb there and I'd hate to see some small child step off in front of a southbound vehicle so maybe that's something you could look at too is that would that be well it, it doesn't change the parking requirements so then then you're looking at getting the five parking spaces as well as the trailer down there yeah. Um, and I think they do lose a lot of the visibility for the business, but yeah. Then you'd have to depend on word of mouth advertising yeah. to get people down. Yeah, there. I know I, there's. I mean, ro rotating the trailer, uh, like <coughs> Mr. Okerberg said here. East that, west. Yeah. I think that would um, alleviate <coughs> some of that. Okay. Yep. Okay. What is the council's wishes? would make a motion to approve um, on the condition that the trailer is situated uh, east-west and is there going to be seating on both sides of the trailer you're going to serve people on both sides or just one just one and would you prefer to have if the trailer is east-west would you prefer to have the open side to the south for Customers, is that what you're thinking? It is now. It is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's probably the only way you could do it. Yep. I'm just. It would be trying to keep people from being all over that corner. Yep. Okay. So you. My motion would be to move the trailer east-west and um, 
I'll go along with the Planning Commission recommendation as far as the parking space down okay. below. Okay. We have a motion by Dave Burbank to follow the guidelines made out by the Planning Commission and to position the trailer in an east-west fashion. Is that correct? Correct. That's the motion by Dave Burbank. Do we have a second to that? Second. Second by Greg uh, Jeff Okerberg. Any further discussion? Got a question. Kevin. Uh, moving that trailer east-west, is that going to take out another parking spot? So does that make another challenge for to get it within? Uh, you might code? be looking at six down there now instead of five. Okay. They're, they're basically using one space for the customers to stand in at this point. So they're using two lots as parking spots with it situated as it is. What, what I see. So they're taking two spots right now. If they rotate it east and west, they're still going to take those two spots. Is and that your interpretation and that they're using two right now? And we can work with them. I, I would have to check with Greg on that okay. to clarify if, if they were taking out two spaces for that or one, but we can work with the applicant here to yeah. make sure they can, we're all okay. in compliant. Okay, yeah, thank we you. We do have a motion. To, I'm still looking for a second. You have a second. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff second. Oh, I'm second. sorry. Second. Did. Second. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. And good luck with that. Moving on to 3.41. Read first reading of proposed ordinance 915 code correction regarding curfew time for minors. And this I'm going to talk to Mark about. Somehow uh, in the recodification process, uh, people under 16 got an additional 30 minutes. <laughs> and uh, that was pointed out to me by uh, the law enforcement department. Uh, that was an error. And uh, so you have before you uh, an amendment to restore the 10 o'clock curfew for those uh, 16 and under. Thank you, Mark. Any well, questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Kevin Rainey to approve. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Greg Schultz. Any further discussion? Any way we can install the whistle again on the power plant? <laughs> <laughs> like Use the like sound that. at 10 o'clock? <laughs> we'll put the mayor on that. <laughs> Good job. I think we're out of luck. <laughs> okay. You have to put the steam generator back. Yep. There you go. This being an ordinance, a request for roll call. Councilman Oakberg. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Burbank. Aye. Rainey. Aye. Abraham. Aye. All five ayes. This has been approved uh, to proceed. Uh, we will have the second meeting at our next council meeting on uh, August 4th. Moving on to the new edition 3.5.1 resolution 5815 consent to interstate power and light co company assignment. And this will go to Chris. Thank you, Les. We've, we've received a request from uh, Interstate Power and Light Company to approve an assignment of the franchise, um, transferring it to Southern Minnesota Electric Cooperative. Uh, we had a 20-year franchise agreement, which was approved in 2002, um, to Interstate Power and Light to operate an electric utility and maintain an electric distribution system within the city. Uh, IPL has entered into an asset purchase and sale agreement with Southern Minnesota Electric um, and the, uh, the sale has been approved by the appropriate state regulators in Iowa and Minnesota. IPL intends to enter into an assignment agreement that will assign all of their rights and obligations under the franchise agreement to Southern Minnesota Cooperative uh, in connection with uh, that proposed asset sale. Article 5 of that franchise permits IPL to assign the franchise to another uh, with written consent from the city of Owatonna. Uh, budget impact uh, would be, uh, there would be no change. Franchise remains intact. We received about $3,300 in franchise fees last year. Uh, this has been uh, reviewed and approved by our city attorney and staff would recommend approval. Thank you, Chris. Any questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Greg Schultz to approve. Do we have a second to that? Second. 
Second by Dave Burbank. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? This has been approved. Moving on to public comments. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on an item that is not on the agenda, please step forward and I ask you to keep it down to two minutes at this time. I have you sign in at the microphone. We have talked about this, but uh, I want you to know that I am a mental health worker and I have programs of self-esteem, assertiveness training, and coping with anger and fear. Uh, I even deal with abused men. Uh, and I would be willing to talk with anyone who would be interested in seeing my programs. I'm kind of retired from it now that I'm 81, so I'd be willing to share it and help uh, rewrite it. Three different programs, self-esteem, assertiveness training, and coping with anger and fear. Thank you. Could I have you put your name down on the tablet there? Want my phone number too? Sure. The kids with um, uh, time to have to be in the house, I think uh, it's a problem for the parents too. Uh, they will say, well, you have to be in or you're going to get this or that to happen to you and they don't come in, but they never get uh, they never get the consequences because they're not very good ones. I'd like Thank to you. talk about that with someone too. I had eight kids, I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else wish to speak? Eight, she's eight. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I moved to Owatonna about two years ago. I was delighted at the parks and trail system that had been provided here. And as I used them and walked them, I became aware of the littering problem in the parks. So I uh, tried to take care of that as much as possible. But I also became aware of the uh, weed problem, weed control problem. I'm sure as being an agricultural uh, country, you're all familiar with burdock. It has big leaves that are like rhubarb, except they're funny, and they choke out everything in the neighborhood. In order to control this, uh, this spring, I uh, poisoned all the way from the sewage plant up to 26th Street, uh, took care of that trail. Uh, there's massive infestations of it in the Lake Chase Park. Um, you know that it gets a uh, bloom stalk on it as much as five feet high with the burrs. Uh, I've talked to people, have had them in their pets, and they say try to remove them, the pets just cry. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, the city's mowing along the trails oftentimes appears to spread the seeds, even plant them. Uh, in, addition, uh, in addition to uh, the areas described, I also did the same thing in the Mineral Springs Park and in uh, the Maple Creek Park. Uh, along with this, of course, I came up with the problem of the parsnips, the wild parsnips, which I've tried to educate uh, the Park and Recreation Board on it. Uh, I've called their attention to it. I've made my services available to them. Uh, they have yet to contact me. Their original foray against the plant, which was effective as far as it went, was so limited that uh, it, it amounts to a gesture. And they've done nothing since. I was there again uh, this morning. And uh, it's a god-awful mess. It's now gone to seed. And if they were to go in there and mow it, I'm sure they would just merely spread the seed around. So they've missed their opportunity. And uh, as I say, they have failed to interact with me in any way at all. Uh, so I can only conclude that the uh, Park and Recreation Department is either overextended, underfunded, or unconcerned. Uh, we could cure all three of these problems by uh, cutting their back a little bit. The Crocus Park would be a likely candidate to be removed. It has no facilities except one charcoal burner. The property would appear to be available for prime residential development, should be uh, sold. It has uh, only a week, uh, only a block away from Willow Park, which has 
much better facilities for the small children, and it's only one block away from the West Hills addition, which would may have plenty of room for the older kids to run around. So that's something for, I think, the uh, community to consider, that we've got to either take care of things or we've got to cut back. We can't just let them go to hell. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? This is going to sound strange, but I have two nuisance complaint forms because we just have a gentleman that's talking about where we should be spraying for weeds and I have a place where we shouldn't be spraying. Okay, violation now uses uh, this nuisance complaint form that's probably not made for, you know, when you let your grass get too long and uh, the neighbor can complain and you can have to be served by the fire department or whatever. But anyway, uh, I have a violation information. I got City of Otana Central Park. Chemical application to Central Park to keep pets and children off flags were among the farmers market vendors. And the other one I've got here is the City of Otana, Otana Public Library lawns. Chemical application to lawns around the Otana Public Library garden to keep pets and children off flags were on the lawn by Otana Public, Otana Public Library garden meet with Chris and um, hopefully Greg and uh, last will be we're sitting around and talking about a whole policy and maybe we can get another gentleman involved too but uh, thank you thank you anyone else wish to speak see none we'll go on to the council comments and we will start with Jeff Oakberg uh, no comment thank you Greg Schultz uh, just uh, get out and enjoy uh, night to night. It's always a fun time, and it's good to see the neighborhoods get together. Thank you. Dave? Hey. Nothing tonight. Kevin? Nothing tonight. Mayor Tom? Well, crazy days are coming up, so I hope everybody enjoys the uh, downtown activities on crazy days on Saturday. And also that the uh, charter school or the Federal uh, Technical Academy has reached its fundraising amount, so it has got official approval to start operation this fall. Uh, as we talk tonight, they have 58 students signed up. They're hoping that they can get another 15 to 20. Those 58 students come from all over Steele County, not just Owatonna, so. And they are also having an open house on the 30th of uh, uh, this month from 68 to uh, have rip your floats and things that uh, students and their parents that have signed up can come to and any parent and student that is interested can come to so and that is located at the Pillsbury campus that is located at Pillsbury campus it's in the uh, Pillsbury Hall the one that's got the pointed building on okay. it yep. thank you Tom Chris uh, just a reminder that uh, because of night to night our next meeting will be on Monday August 3rd uh, for the council meeting yes that will be on the th on Monday night next uh, our next meeting two mm -hmm. weeks from Good yesterday so with that uh we'll look for a motion to adjourn so moved motion by kevin rainey to adjourn do we have a second 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 by greg schultz all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed meeting adjourned <laughs>